In this video, I'm going to go over. Shh, go ahead. In this video, I'm going to go over our food barrel and our cook it. So this is my old bag, dry bag, Baja bag from the seal line. I'll go into that in a second. Pop this metal clasp off the food barrel. It's something I need to get off my chest. People who use food barrels often use this as a fish filleting station. This is probably the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. You can get fish guts and slime all over this and make it into like a homing beacon for a bear's nose. Uh, this I would never ever use to clean a fish on. Use a log, your paddle is better, uh, but not this. It'll bring a bear right to your food barrel. So with that said, let's get in here. Here is my cook kit. I love mesh bags. Just allows, if there's any moisture on it, it allows it to expel it. Here is my mug, a little titanium mug from Bitty Big Q. My friend David sent that to us down in southern Ontario. This, uh, you can see everything's in mesh bags. Um, it not only <clears throat> keeps the char off because I cook right on the fire, not on gas burners, all of my pots and pans are scorched and charred and they will rub off black on everything. So that's another reason to have the mesh bag, it just provides a bit of separation. Um, this is the Pathfinder Bush Pot, 1.9 liters, just, just under, a hair under, um, and it is terrific. We got it last year for Quetico, and I have nothing bad to say about it. It's really, really good, really strong. We also have this old pot, Mrs. Potts. This is a 1.5 liter pot, and it's titanium, that one was steel, and titanium, or sorry, Aluminum. This is aluminum. Titanium would be even better, but a lot more expensive. Aluminum is great. Shush. It's lightweight, um, but there are concerns. I'm not sure if the scientific basis for this, but that uh, concerns that aluminum leads to dementia and Alzheimer's. So that kind of freaks me out. And I try not to. That was one reason we went to the steel pot. It's heavier, but. It's also rock solid. That steel pot's so solid, and this one's more malleable, especially when it's hot. It is prone to bending, but still, it's a nice little pot, and it served me well. Great for a soloist. The 1.9 liter is better for two, even three people, maybe. This is the Sea to Summit Alpha Pan. I'm really happy with it. It took me forever to find a pan like this that was kind of low profile but wide. I need a wide pan because I like to. Uh, toast non bread in here and non bread is pretty wide so uh, I need to fit the whole thing in there and this accommodates it and then it's got a folding handle that tucks under there it's got a rubber stopper there and despite that I cook on the fire that has not melted away that's held up this part is metal um, I do try to keep the flame away from here I keep kind of this off on the side but yeah this pan has been great my plate is just a red plastic plate. It probably costs like three bucks at a camping store, but I really like these because they're so durable. Um, they have a bit of a bowl to them, right? So if you need to use it as a bowl or you're having kind of a liquidy soupy meal, it gives you a nice lip to contain it all within. It's a nice size. If you have multiple people, they stack perfectly. Keep it simple. And my cutlery. What we take is a pot gripper. I've never used a pot gripper before. It can be used in lieu of handles or a bail arm. It just grabs onto the lip like this. I actually found this on a campsite one time and uh, I really liked it. I never used these before until I had that one that I found. And uh, now I love it. I use it all the time. Got a little folding knife from Bitty Big Q again. Uh, MSR. I think this is steel um, fork, and then a couple of titanium spoons that we recently got by Tokes. This is the long-handled one. It's really nice for a, a deep pot. You can really stir at the bottom, which is so important because if you're cooking on a fire, the bottom is so hot, and often you get your food sticking to that. So you really need to get down there and scrape and move that food away from the bottom and circulate it. Uh, and then this one's just like a regular one. This one has a much bigger cup to the spoon so it's actually better for eating but this one's good for stirring and you can eat with it 
This is just a reusable shopping bag. I essentially use it to organize food. And there are nice custom made bags you can have for food barrels and they're just a lot more expensive so I just make do with this and uh, yeah I keep food in here I'll go over food in a separate video and dehydrating but that's how I organize groups of food and I find that it generally you know it doesn't close at the top but if you put it in the right side up then it generally seems to stay in there pretty well without everything falling out into a giant mess this is my stick stove or hobo stove it's the Kelly kettle hobo stove in the large size and I love it it's just like even if you just want to have a little fire in there if you're some places around here you know are carving out campsites from from thick bush and there's just there's no certainly no designated site or proper uh, fire pit and sometimes it can be dangerous to have a fire uh, there's just no safe place to have it because you can burn down into the roots you can catch on wild grasses around you if they're dry so this is a nice safe place to have a fire if there's nothing else there or if I don't want to prep a lot of firewood you know it uses way less wood to burn uh, to to cook your food in this compared to an open fire which is what I typically use so I'm happy with that we got that last fall this is the most important bag of all it contains the scotch and I learned long ago always to keep liquids. This is the Scotch bladder. It's a platypus one liter bag, 34 ounces. Uh, always keep that inside of this dry bag because if this spills out, your, all of your food is going to be covered in Scotch. It's going to stink and it's not going to be good. This is an Nalgene container. This is what I prefer for oil. I have a strong preference for this actually. I really trust a Nalgene bottle to hold this, it never leaks. And oil is another thing you wouldn't want to get everywhere. But these two things I keep in here or the odd time will bring like a can or two of beer. Those go in here. In the event that they explode, they're contained. On the Steel River trip, I remember the scotch spilled out, but it was contained in here. And I just poured it back into the bladder from the bag. It was a little dirty, but <laughs> at least I had scotch for the rest of the trip. Water filter. This is the Platypus Gravity Works 4 liter filter and I love it. I had the Catadine. I have a separate video on this if you really want more. But uh, it's just a simple system. You scoop up 4 liters of water in this, connect it with the tubing. Gravity pulls it through this filter, flows down this way. Attach the other tubing to your clean bag and it fills this up. So this is a nice system because it, it has everything including your reservoir. Some filters won't have a reservoir and you have to find something you know, to put it all in. So this is a really nice kit, it folds up all into here. You can replace the filters which is extremely important to me. I hate gear where it's hard to find replacement parts. However, the filters are really expensive. I think they're like 55 Canadian. Um, so that's kind of a tough pill to swallow. but. I find they last quite a long time and you can easily back flush this one just by holding, fill up the clean bag, hold the clean bag above the dirty and it will put uh, water through the opposite direction which will clean out the filter and get out the junk. It builds up in there and uh, messes it up. This is a, a bear hang rope and it has this really large carabiner so I can throw the carabiner rather than trying to find something like a rock to tie around this. If you have done that, you know it's not a, a great operation. And you need a carabiner anyway to clip onto your food bag or barrel. So um, the bigger the carabiner, the better. I would actually like even better, uh, bigger and bulkier than this with more weight for easy throwing. But that brings me to another point. In the boreal, for in the boreal forest here where we camp, you often cannot hang your food. I know that sounds like a sin. If you can't hang your food, then the bears are going to get it. They could. That's just reality up here, and there's nothing you can do about it. We don't have trees that have big extending arms to throw a rope over. The trees here are like spruce, fir, and they, their branches are you know pointed down, not horizontal. So if you throw a rope over them, they're just going to slide off. 
And uh, like we have birch for hardwoods and poplar, but it's rare to find a limb. Very rare to find a limb that, uh, that could hold a rope and, and hang your food without it sliding down or breaking. So that's just, uh, that's the reality up here, which is why most people in the north have a preference for a barrel as opposed to a bag. I grew up on the bag. This is what I started out with. Um, I never use it anymore, to be honest. It has some advantages. It's a bit cheaper. It gets smaller as your trip goes on. So as you eat food, you can make this smaller and smaller. A barrel stays the same size that it is the whole trip. But, oh, be quiet please. There you go. But the barrel I prefer, uh, It, despite that it's big and bulky, it's just very functional. It's strong, it's resistant, like it floats. The bag will float too, as long as you've uh, secured it, but that goes for the barrel as well. You have to secure it properly with that metal clasp. But I really like the barrel uh, because it provides a bit of resistance to critters when you can't hang it. A bear can certainly still get into it if it really wants to. You may have seen Chris Prouse's video on that recently. She had a bear barrel and hung it and the bear still, this huge roly-poly bear still managed to get into it. Um, so, you know, hanging, uh, hanging is definitely a good option and if you can do it, you absolutely should. Because so if you habituate a bear and teach it that it's going to get food from campsites or from hung food, it is going to go back for that for sure. So uh, definitely do it if you can. I'm not trying to be negligent or set a bad example. It's just here, it's not possible. But the other thing I really like about a barrel is you can attach a harness, so the trailhead harness, and it just makes carrying it on portages so much nicer than this bag, which I would also always be rammed with food. This is a 40 liter Baja bag, and I've taken like 12 day trips with this for myself solo, and it is rammed, it's heavy, and I'm just like holding on to it in a bear hug on the portages. You, maybe you can get some kind of harness for a dry bag like that, but it's just much more practical with a barrel. So that is why we primarily use that. This is a 30 liter barrel. Uh, it is, sorry, this is a 60. There's also 30, uh, but we definitely need the, the 60 for, for both of us for longer trips. My toothpaste and toothbrushes, we keep those in here. Uh, it's a bear attractant for sure, toothpaste. It doesn't have to be food for it to attract a bear, it just has to have a strong odor. Things like gasoline or deodorant could also do the same. Our billy bellows, which we use to blow on the fire and stoke it. Extremely useful. To be honest, uh, Aaron showed me the billy bellows the first time uh, we were, she wanted to take it on a trip and I was like, well, do you really need that? We were trying to pack light uh, for that trip and uh, I was a skeptic. I was, I'd never used bellows before like that. And now, I, I just love them. Uh, we sell them for 20 bucks if you want one. And here, uh, this is just odds and ends like tea and spices. So I'll go over that more in the food video. And last thing is just some hand lotion in there for the same reason. It has a scent, it could attract bears. One other thing is containers. Old peanut butter jar. This is um, a set that we purchased. Lots of different sizes. This bitty big Q silicone bottle, you seal it up, it can be airtight. Um, things like these are so useful to hold on to rather than using disposable bags. And I, I actually I shouldn't use the word disposable. These are absolutely reusable. You can see this one has seen some use. Just wash it out like any other piece of uh, stuff that you take to contain food. Like, doesn't have to be a single use. We're past that point in history when something like this can just go straight to the garbage. Once it gets a hole in it, yeah, it's garbage. But until then, uh, it is reusable. And I really prefer the hard plastics. Even though they weigh a bit more, they'll last a lot longer. Like this should last at least a decade, right? And save countless plastic bags over the number of trips that we do. So getting your containers in order is a really big part of, uh, of getting your, your food ready for every trip. That's it, and now I'm going to move on to actual food and the dehydrating process.